In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the Lord God created the second Eden, it was his intention to use Adam and Eve as the first ever human beings with flesh around them to walk on earth. Because the first Eden was occupied by ministering spirits, the leading Lucifer, until he rose up against God. So when God created the second Eden and created man in the spirit of a ministering spirit like him, he decided to cover them with flesh and gave them a place to stay. So whatever the reason was that God would give Adam flesh and later on if flesh was given when he created them in the spirit form for they were supposed to be the first human being that were supposed to reproduce offsprings on the face surface of the earth. So with Adam Adam was a grown up full human when he became a living soul because he was the first to be reproducing. So our first question for those who have written to me is, is there anything like the right time or age for marriage for marriage based on scriptural teachings. So in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, we are seeing that the moment the Lord God formed the clay aspect of man and placed the spirit inside it, and when man became a living soul, Adam was not a baby. Adam was a strong, full, grown-up man. The first of its kind to follow the reproduction process of God, speaking to him in the spirit world when he was created. So, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 22, we see after the rip taking of God and he the Lord went outside the purview of Adam and multiplied the skin to form a different shape of a human being according to scripture when he formed the woman and brought him to the man if was already a full grown woman. So when you come to verse come to verse 23, we realize that when Adam Adam saw her, she proclaimed and gave her a name. Adam was given the capability to name all things because he had a mind of God. And the moment Adam opened his mouth, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, he shall be called not a girl or a baby, but a woman. Man. Watch the word, the Hebrew word, full grown woman. There are words for babies in the Bible, there are words for maidens, girls in the Bible. But Adam chose 
a full grown woman to represent the first female ship that he saw in Eden. So now we conclude that Adam and Eve were full grown women, man and woman. And no man except God will be able to give us the type of age that they were. No man. Not even even Moses. Nobody. It is God alone that knows the age of Adam and the age of Eve when they became living beings on earth. Amen. So, in the country that a Christian resides, that country has got laws concerning the age that will show that a person has reached an independent stage of no supervision. In many countries in the world, they are saying 18, 21, some people 16, and the rest. So within the culture of the Ghanaian culture, a young woman is 17 and a woman is 18 years. So when you are a Christian, even though 18 years is a teenager, when you are a Christian, that you want to get married, you must not flout the law of your country. So even though we don't know the age that Adam and Eve became a living soul on earth, we are bounded by the law of the country to make sure that a person is of the adult stage according to the law of the country before they can become man and wife. So because God didn't give us the age, but God gave us the conditions under which a man must be before he can call a wife to him. And that condition cuts across every country and every tribe in the world. The age differs. You go to some country, they say 16, they age 18, 21, some places. But when you remove the age aside, what God made Adam to be, the situation a man must be in before he must search for a wife, it cuts across every country, every age in the world. So I'm talking about the condition the man must be in before he searches for a wife. So in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, we see that one of the first condition God created for Adam was to give Adam a place of stay. He gave the man a home. If you go home, you will, he will describe the home and even describe the gold on the land and the rivers that are crisscrossing, the place that became the Garden of Eden, the eastern ward of Eden, where Adam was staying. And the Lord God planted a garden eastwards in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So when Adam became a living soul, a full-grown man, not knowing left and right, his father held his hands and took him to the eastward part of where he came out and said, this is where you are going to stay. Adam had a home of his own provided for him by his father. Amen. So it's a garden that he is in with all sort of food and all sort of animals therein. But that is not the only condition upon which man must get married. I told you from the introduction, in verse 15 of Genesis 2, the Lord gave Adam work. Dress and keep 
the garden. The dressing and keeping is the constant supervision that everything will be in the level field and all the rotten fruits and the rest will be eaten by animals and there will be no debt within the area. What Adam was given was instructions, but he was not going to sweat for it because he was a demigod speaking for animals and earth to hear him. He was not sweating, but he must work. Dress and keep it. So I've given you a place to stay and I'm giving you work. These two conditions cut across every country in the world. If a man decides to go and find a wife, you must look within yourself. Do I have a place of stay? And do I have a sustaining job? Two. Whether you are from Kazakhstan, Russia, you are from Ghana, America, whatever it is, the moment you reach the stage of marriage, you must be able to find a place of stay and a continuous work. God placed that as a condition before Eve was brought to Adam. If you go home, watch it. So we have a home. He put the man in the home and he made the man to dress and keep work, home, work, home. You cannot contemplate to go and find a wife when you are patching with somebody in his bedroom. You must leave it and go and find your own place of stay. That when the man is coming with a spouse or a girlfriend, you must sleep on a veranda. You have not reached the state of marriage. Get yourself a place of your own. A room, a house. For our master had a house. Our father Adam had a place of stay. And get yourself a continuous sustaining job. These two things are required in every culture in the world. Because God made it so. Whosoever want to get married and will go against these two conditions, your marriage has already failed before it started. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you look at the work aspect and you look at the ministration of Apostle Paul, he made it a command for every man in his church. By force, you must work. Because the work will produce the finance to get a place of stay and make you eligible to find a wife. For Apostle Paul said, it is better to marry than to burn. So all the men in Apostle Paul's work, church must make sure. And you know, he was writing the letters to different kind of people. So he said, go and take the letter I wrote from Corinthians. Go and take the letter I take from Galatia. Exchange it from Thessalonica. Exchange it so that his rule will be across all the churches. And it was a mantra. It was by force for every man under Paul's ministry, not to be slothful, but to have a job. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11. We see that command coming through. So the Galatians will come and take the Thessalonians one. Thessalonica will take the Galatians one. And they will just change. And when they look at the Thessalonians one, they see Apostle Paul steady to be quiet and to be to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. It's by force. Sorry. It's a serious thing. We commanded you. So you are not a man to wake up and to sit down and to put your hands in your laps and then at the end of the day say you are going to get married. You will not get married. Every man must be able to do his business, his work, 
your own hands must work the money must come from your sweat then when you have been able to use your money to get a place of stay you can now let's say brothers follow me i found a woman to get married work was part and parcel of apostle paul's command for every man in his church the churches that he established all over 23 of them every man inside when you reach the age of getting married you must have work so you'll be steady to be quiet do your own business and to work with your own hands as we not him alone the apostles have commanded the church why because god commanded adam to work to feed his family and later on even to sweat for it a lazy man is not a christian mm -hmm. if you read the bible very carefully according to apostles the way if you're a lazy man and you are not you don't want to work you are not fulfilling your will as a christian you cannot because it's a commandment by god to the apostle to tell every man to be able to work Amen. so these are the two things that you need to be rich that age that you can get married so when you look at Ghana, by the time you are 18, you are still in school. You have to come from school, get some job, get some interview, get some job. Before you can get some two by two house, get some bed and things. So by the time you reach marriage, 25, 26, 27, 30 and the rest. You know? So a boy who is at 18 years is full grown. But if you're still in school, how are you going to marry in school 18 years? so that is my suggestion but the two things the way you have to find a place of stay and later on you have to have a job these are the two conditions across every nation across every tribe if you want to get married you must possess them amen because god laid down these two foundation for man before he brought if in this modern culture a man sometimes can decide because of laziness and not able to work i'm searching for a rich wife a girl whose family has got money so that i will just join myself to the wife and you see that they will sit in the car Go from chop bar to chop bar, from, from drinking bar to drinking bar, work, they will never do it. That marriage will fail. For the first year, for the second year, it will be there. But consistently, it will fail. It's not based upon God's direction. There are men working all over the world, searching for rich women. All over the world. The woman is rich. They will try to say, okay, I'll marry you. They will try to say, they don't want to work. They are gigolos. They marry you for three years and so forth. So some of them even will kill you to collect the money from the man, from the woman. They don't want to work. It is not right. Such marriage, such marriage based on not the man not working and looking after the money of the woman and following the woman and the rest, that marriage is shaky. I tell you from God's scriptures for God made it so for Adam as an example for all men go through scripture and see the great men of old in their houses and how great they were and how hard they were working and their marriage stood for 25 50 60 70 years today modern language Laodicea I want to chill I don't feel like working. Therefore, I'm a, I've reached the age of marriage. I must search for a girl. I must fetch a woman who has got money. Continue. It will be well. Three years, five years, the marriage will break down. It will not work. So all men who have that idea must change and become serious men at home and work to support your rich wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In this country, I'm closing. We'll come to the second question next Sunday, next uh, Thursday. In this entire message, 
a young man proposed to the woman they got married I blessed them three months problems in the marriage I've gone to the house several times gone to the house why brother you got married to the sister within three months you are look at it you want to break the marriage and so forth so the brother woke up and told me point blank I married her because the father said he would take me and her to UK in this time, I married them in BBF. So the marriage spoiled. In three months, they divorced. Because, because the father has not taken the woman and he and their daughter to UK. And that was the motive, the reason why he gave me to get married. And because the father didn't do it, he's no longer interested in the marriage. A man who doesn't want to work to look after his own wife and want to wait for the rich father to give the daughter money in order for them to travel overseas before he can continue to marry the woman. In this end time, the basics is wrong. The basics is wrong. A man must work to support your wife. Every man who is a Christian must be a hard-working man, sweating to bring food on the table, and God will bless your handiworks and sustain your marriage. Any other form of marriage which does not stand upon God's divine plan will fail. Will fail. These are practical examples. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we have to come to a point that as leaders and mothers and grandmothers and the rest, when people come close to us and they are talking of marriage, let them know the principles of God. They have to know the principles of God. Brother, we, if we marry outside the principles of God, no matter how wonderful the wedding ceremony is, the marriage will fail. God is the institute of marriage and we must use his law to govern the marriage. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. For this wonderful gift you gave unto man, that will let man even grow older and older and older and have companionship and make a home for himself and his children. As we learn, Father, when things have gone wrong, help us to strengthen them. Amen. I call upon all your children who are men, that give them grace and favor and the strength to work to put food on the table for their children and their wives so that the marriage will stand by your law. Thank you, Father. Amen.